In this video, we present the prediction and update equations under the assumption that the posterior at time k-1 is a Gaussian mixture with hypotheses indexed from 1 to capital H k-1. At time k, we obtain a posterior, which is a Gaussian mixture, and we index the hypotheses from 1 to the total number of hypotheses. The equations presented here are closely related to the conceptual solution to the prediction and update steps. And the difference is mainly that we index the hypotheses in a different manner that is more suitable for developing Gaussian sum filters. In Gaussian sum filtering, we assume that the posterior at time k-1 is a Gaussian mixture with capital HK-1 terms, weights WK-1 of HK-1, and Gaussian densities PK-1 given K-1 of HK-1 of XK-1. Using derivations similar to what you've seen in videos about the conceptual solution, one can show that the predicted density is a Gaussian mixture with the same number of terms and the same weights, whereas the density for every hypothesis has changed. One can also show that the posterior density at time k is a Gaussian mixture with updated weights and densities, and that we obtain mk plus 1 new hypotheses for every hypothesis at time k minus 1. As usual, the posterior before we introduce new approximation is denoted with the sign breathe. In this video, we present the equations for the predicted density pk given k minus 1 for a given hypothesis, as well as the updated weights and densities in p breathe. To obtain the predicted density for a given hypothesis, we can use the chapman kolmogorov gorov equation stating that the predicted density is the motion model pi k times the posterior at time k minus 1, integrated over all possible states at time k minus 1. In the special case where the posterior for a given hypothesis is Gaussian at time k minus 1, and the motion model is linear and Gaussian, the predicted density is also Gaussian. Further, its mean and covariance are given by the common filter prediction equations, meaning that the predicted mean is fk-1 times the mean at time k-1, and the predicted covariance is fp f transpose plus q. Note that the equations presented on this slide are completely analogous to the prediction in the conceptual solution. In the update step, we obtain a new hypothesis hk for every pair of hypotheses hk-1 and theta k. This is again analogous to the conceptual solution. The difference is that instead of hk-1, we then had a sequence of associations up to time k-1, and instead of hk, we had a sequence of associations up to time k. The weight for a combination of hypotheses hk-1 and theta k is proportional to the weight of hk-1 times this integral if theta k is equal to zero, and this expression if theta k is greater than zero. These equations should also look familiar. Note that the right-hand side is the expression for the unnormalized weight, and that we have written that the final weights are proportional to this expression. To find the proportionality constant and normalize the weights, we should sum the right-hand side over all combinations of hk-1 and theta k. We also want to find the posterior density given a hypothesis hk, that is, given a combination of hk-1 and theta k. When theta k is equal to zero, that density is simply proportional to the predicted density given hk-1 times 1 minus pd. When theta k is greater than zero, that density is instead proportional to the predicted density times pd times the measurement likelihood gk for z theta k. We have seen similar equations before, and under certain assumptions they simplify into factors and densities that we can obtain from a Kalman filter update. The specific assumptions needed for the equations to simplify are that PD is constant and that the object likelihood GK is linear and Gaussian. The expression for the weight of HK then takes the following form. If theta K is zero, it is the weight of HK minus one times one minus PD. And if theta K is greater than zero, it is the weight of HK minus one times PD times the predicted likelihood divided by the cluttered intensity. Also, under these assumptions, the posterior density given hk is a Gaussian density. 
If theta k is equal to zero, this Gaussian density has the same mean and covariance as the predicted density under hypothesis hk minus one. If theta k is greater than zero, its mean and covariance are obtained using a standard karma filter update under the assumptions that the predicted density has the moments defined by hk minus one and that z theta k is the object measurement. All of these equations are analogous to the ones that we found in the conceptual solution where we also obtained mk plus one new hypothesis for every predicted hypothesis. On the previous slides, we described equations that can be used to compute the weight, mean, and covariance of any hypothesis hk. In principle, the weight, mean, and covariance is enough to understand what the hypothesis is, but to store it in a computer, it is useful to give hk a number and refer to it as, say, hypothesis number one, five, or 10. How we number the hypothesis is in some sense arbitrary, as long as each hypothesis has its own number. Here, we also want to ensure that the hypotheses are numbered from one up to the total number of hypotheses. Here are two possible ways to select the number for HK that both have reasonable properties. As an example, we can look at the first alternative and see how that behaves when there are two hypotheses at time K minus one, and only one measurement at time K. This means that theta k can take the value zero or one, and that there are four possible hypotheses at time k. Using the first alternative to assign the numbers to hk, we see that when hk minus one is one and theta k is zero, hk takes the value one. When hk minus one is one and theta k is one, hk takes the value three. Finally, when hk minus one is two and theta k is one, hk takes the value four. We note that every pair of hypotheses, hk minus one and theta k, maps to a unique number hk between one and four. And in general, every pair maps to a unique number hk between one and the total number of hypotheses, which is the property that we want. What I've presented here is really just a way to bookkeep the hypotheses in a computer. But it can be helpful to know about if you want to implement these algorithms from scratch.